Our study was on a neo-deflection technique, and so we did a preliminary study doing orbital dynamics, control, uh, navigation, attitude, and mass budgets, sort of preliminary aspect of all the subsystem designs, for a deflection technique using solar sublimation with multiple, scrape, multiple spacecraft formation with mirrors. There was two groups. One is Strathclyde University with Professor Colin McGuinness, and the other one is Glasgow University with myself, and two professors, Dr. Vasily and Dr. Adichie. As previous studies, there were actually two or three other PhDs working on this as well, and they did a uh, comparison of previous deflection methods or possible deflection methods. So they range from nuclear blast, kinetic impactors, surface ablation, which is the one that we looked at, uh, mass drivers, low thrust, gravity tugs, and finally Yarkovsky effects. And they did a sort of analysis based on three criteria. Uh, one is the miss distance, or the deviation distance. The second is the warning time. Uh, this was adjusted based on the level of the technology, or the technology readiness level. And the last was the mass in orbit for the spacecraft. And a full uh, Pareto set was done for each analysis, for each method, and then compared. The ones that performed the best were solar sublimation and um, nuclear uh, blast. Nuclear blast was pursued by another PhD student, and I looked at the solar sublimation concept. The original concept was first hypothesized in a letter to the editor in 92, and again by J. Mellish in 93, uh, with one single mirror about one to 10 kilometers in size, simply focusing on a, a directional mirror, and then reflecting the beam down onto the asteroid. The idea is that if you have enough power, you can sublimate, so turn from solid to gas, the uh, material of the asteroid. It creates a debris plume, which creates a low thrust, which will slowly deviate the asteroid. The benefit, of course, is it's a uh, relatively long-term strategy. There is, however, a number of problems with this in the fact that it's a 1 to 10 kilometer size mirror, so there's control issues, there's heat temperature issues on the secondary mirror, there's the fact that you have to be in very close proximity to the asteroid because the focal distance to get it to focus, and the power that you need on the surface of the asteroid has to be relatively high. So the methods we came up with was to have, instead of one large mirror, many small mirrors. All right. uh, inherently, the design is scalable, a uh, little more redundant, the temperature concerns go down, the control aspect goes down because the surface area dictates the solar radiation pressure, which dictates the control. We looked at a number of solutions for this, um, from lasers, whoops, lasers to, uh, as a collimating device, to lenses as a collimating device, and also direct imaging. When we looked at the deviation distance of the asteroid, the idea is that you want to thrust for a certain time period before uh, the moid, which is the uh, minimum orbit interception distance. So either when the point at which the asteroid becomes close to the Earth, like the, the orbits cross, okay, or come close to crossing. So if we take the potential impact in April 13, 2036 for Apophis and work backwards, we calculate the time required to thrust and then coast such that to achieve a deviation distance, um, we try to a variety of them, say the Earth-Moon distance or 20,000 kilometers, depending. We also produced a model to say the thrust produced by the asteroid. So if we deflect the asteroid, what's the uh, acceleration? that the debris produces, and therefore what's the deviation. And then this is propagated with Gauss. There are a number of configurations we uh, thought of. Again, you can see here it's a collimating lens. Okay, The principal primary mirror is, is parabolic, collects, focuses down here, and then redirects with a small secondary mirror. This is a direct imaging. Um, because we want to maximize the surface area, the idea we come up with was to create an adjustable mirror, such that we could actually alter the shape of the mirror, which alters the focal point, so that we can use that to steer and, and hit the asteroid. Uh, we looked at both these, which are also laser options, one <coughs> in front, and then we moved it behind for heat concerns, because then it's in the shadow of the primary mirror. And we also considered um, just having sheer solar arrays, so it's an um, indirectly pumped solar laser. The problem with this one is the mass is fairly large given the current state of technology for solar arrays. 
We concentrated on two different designs, uh, completely different mission designs, different orbital trajectories, different uh, control laws, and different mirror configurations, and therefore different mass budgets. And we did both these designs in parallel. The first one is a fixed parabolic mirror, concentrates the light, reflects it back onto a solar pumped laser, either directly or indirectly, and then takes the mirror, reflects it back onto the NEO. Um, these are the reflector, or sorry, the radiators placed in the <coughs> shadow, and then there's some minimum angle such that you control it to hit the NEO. The green indicate the force felt by the solar radiation pressure. Everything is more or less in line except for the small secondary directional mirror, which creates that torque. And then if you want, if you don't design the solar axes, if they're not uh, symmetrical, then you'll have torque from that as well. We took into account solar <coughs> radiation pressure, third body effects, and the fact that we're constantly deviating the orbit of Apophis. And we created a control law which optimizes all these perturbations and tries to sort of minimize, or, um, minimize the perturbations based on the orbit. The orbit itself we developed Instead of using uh, hovering around Apophis, what we designed is an orbit that in fact orbits around the sun with a slight periodic disturbance in the initial position of velocity. So the effect is, if I'm looking at it from the NEO, it looks like a closed small orbit, either behind or ahead of the NEO. If I look at it from an inertial point of view from the sun, it looks like an orbit that orbits around the sun. So essentially it orbits in formation with Apophis. We place it at a distance far enough such that the third body uh, effects can be treated as a point mass and compensated for in the control. This is a limit sphere. This is the results of a, a multi-objective optimization routine. And you can see the debris plume there, which is one of the criteria for the optimization to avoid. To give you an idea of the effects of the perturbations on the, or on the orbit, if it's leave, uh, left uncontrolled, you have a deflection of about plus or minus 20 kilometers in the semi-major axis, which is probably the most major effect. This just gives you the force. Uh, you can see in the y direction, which is sort of uh, relatively along the velocity vector, it's in the radial transverse normal hill frame. This is due to the secondary mirror. This is the results of uh, feedback control law for the first about 30 days of the mission. All of these are the difference in orbital parameters, which is what we developed the proximal motion equations for. And it's the difference between the Keplerian at an instant in time of the uh, spacecraft and that of the asteroid. All right, and so we just minimized, uh, for the control, we minimize the difference between what we want the target objective to be and what it actually is. And so we control it within plus or minus one meter, and all the rest of them run the order of about 10 to the minus 12 <coughs> radians which is well within tolerance and in fact hitting the lower bounds of uh, MATLAB precision. The second option was to do a direct imaging using an uh, adaptable shaped mirror. You can see here the blue is if we assume that the rays of the sun are parallel, in which case we can directly focus at a point on the asteroid. However, because the sun is not, the rays are not uh, precisely parallel, you get a divergence, which is the red. However, even with an 80 diameter mirror, you get about eight meters spot size, which is a concentration factor of about 95, which is more than enough to sublimate um, if you increase the number of spacecraft. This is an artificial equilibrium point. Because it has to be in relatively close proximity to the asteroid, we examined the solar radiation pressure balanced with the gravitational effects of the asteroid, and then tried to map out the regions where they were equal. Okay, this is a region, for example, this is the NEO here, Okay, direction of the sun, and so you can place it here where it would sublimate in this direction. The optimal direction of thrust for a long warning time is along the tangential direction. An interesting feature of the artificial equilibrium points is that because they're direct, directly dependent on solar radiation pressure and third body effects, they change as the distance from the sun changes. So as the orbit goes around, the position of the AEP moves. Okay, due to the rotation around the sun, it moves backwards and forwards, closer and farther away from the asteroid. We also modeled the fact that the asteroid is elliptical and therefore it rotates, and that gives us a slight motion like this. Rotates about, well, Apophis rotates about once every 30 